When an NHL roster doesn't have enough space for its players, or if it wants a player to develop, it will send them down to the AHL, the American Hockey League. This league is considered a tier below the National Hockey League and is seen as a developmental league for the NHL. But that's not where the grapevine ends. There are other leagues that are tiers below the AHL and leagues that are tiers below those leagues. Each of these leagues have a continuous flow of players going in between them from team to team depending on how full a roster is or how depleted it is. This is how the tier system looks. At the top, we have the NHL, who feeds into the AAA ranked AHL. Like I said earlier, the AHL is the main development league for the NHL. And it's for prospect development and for players just not good enough to crack an NHL roster. The AHL has teams located throughout the United States and Canada, so it doesn't only focus on one geographical area. Now below the AHL is the East Coast Hockey League, or the ECHL for short, and it's classified as a double A minor league. For formal and official reasons though, it is fully known as the ECHL as its official full name, since teams are spread all throughout the US and sometimes an ECHL team even appears in Canada. In terms of skill, the gap between the AHL and NHL is generally smaller than the skill gap between the AHL and ECHL. That's not saying that ECHLers are unskilled however, as there are some great athletes down there, just sometimes they don't have the hockey sense to make it into the higher leagues. Much like other lower tiered leagues, teams suffer multiple relocations, so just because a team is in its current city one year doesn't mean it'll be there the next. The ECHL is usually as far down the feeder system as people know, but it goes even lower. After the ECHL, we see a significantly large fall in the skill to the next leagues. These leagues are the Southern Professional Hockey League, the Federal Hockey League, and the League Nord American de Hockey. The FHL compromises of teams based in the Midwest and Northeastern US. The SPHL has teams from the Midwest and Southeastern US. And the LNAH only has teams from Quebec. These leagues are the lowest level of hockey, skill and tier wise, but if one of these three had to be picked to stand above the others, it would probably be the SPHL. For the most part, that's the end of the line for the main professional feeder leagues in North America. Let's take a look at an example of what this type of feeding chain would look like for an NHL team. The NHL's Vancouver Canucks have an AHL affiliate agreement with the AHL's Utica Comets. And as of right now, the Canucks and Comets then also have an agreement with the ECHL's Kalamazoo Wings. Affiliations can always change depending on geographical location or how comfortable a team feels with another. The Canucks don't have any team affiliation with an SPHL, FHL, or LNAH team, but their ECHL affiliate can sign a player from those leagues if they need to. So, if the Kalamazoo Wings need a player, they could potentially sign one from a team like the Fayetteville Marksmen, the Cool FM St. George's, and the Danville Dashers, amongst many others. That should wrap up what this entire system looks like. I hope you enjoyed the video, and with that, I'll see you in the next one.